Okay, so picture this. You just spent like, what, $2.5 million on a Bugatti Chiron? This is a car that's basically a spaceship on wheels, but yeah. then you hit a snag, right? The clutch is acting up. Oh no. Today's deep dive uh, takes us into this crazy world of hypercars. Okay. And the story of the Bugatti Chiron. Right. We're going to be looking at excerpts from a podcast called The Case. Hmm. And they did a deep dive on some mechanical hiccups with this automotive masterpiece. Interesting. So get ready to explore the Chiron's insane engineering. Okay. And understand why even a car designed to be the absolute best yeah. isn't always perfect. Right. What's so fascinating about this is the contrast. Right. You have this car that's like the top of line right. when it comes to automotive engineering. But then you hear these things about its reliability. Exactly. It's interesting. You would think with a price tag, like, that shifting gears would be the least of your worries. Right. So before we get into, like, all the details about these clutch problems, mm -hmm. let's set the stage a little bit. Yep. Bugatti has always been this name that means luxury. Oh, and like pushing the limits of what a car can do. Absolutely. And the Chiron, this is their crown jewel. It's their baby. It's the follow-up to the Veyron. Which was a car that, you know, right. changed what people thought was possible in a car. Totally. And we're talking about 1,479 horsepower. Good, ridiculous. A top speed that would get you a one-way ticket to space if it wasn't electronically limited. Right. This thing is basically a rocket ship disguised as a car. Basically. And I think that's where this issue comes from. Okay. When you have that much power in a car, even the smallest things get amplified. Totally. <laughs> Way bigger. It's like you're trying to control a hurricane with a kite. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. So some Chiron owners started reporting these clutch problems. Real. And we're not talking about every single Chiron. Okay. But enough to kind of raise some eyebrows in the car world. Interesting. And these aren't, you know, small things. Right. In a car built for this level of performance, yeah. even a tiny hesitation in the gear changes is a big deal. Of course, yeah. It'd be like a hiccup during a space launch. Exactly. Concerning. Yeah. So to understand this a little better, we need to rewind a bit. Okay. Bugatti, for a while, was kind of a sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. Then, in 1998, the Volkswagen Group comes knocking. Comes in. And basically brings them back to life. Yeah. And Volkswagen's goal was... Clear. What's that? They wanted to make Bugatti like the king of the car world, right? It makes sense. They put tons of resources, engineering, everything oh, yeah. into making the most technologically advanced luxury cars. Wow. And honestly, they kind of do it. Yeah. But it makes you wonder, did this like super fast comeback, this yeah. drive to constantly innovate, Right. did that have something to do with these clutch problems? That's a good question. Right. Yeah, when you're always pushing the boundaries of what's possible, sometimes you're going to hit some bumps in the road. Yeah. And it sounds like in this case, those yeah. bumps are these clutch issues. It's like building this super complicated watch, right? One tiny gear is off. Right. And the whole thing can fall apart. Exactly. Now, remember that 1,479 horsepower we talked about? It's hard to forget. That translates to a crazy amount of torque oh, yeah. that the clutch has to handle. Oh, wow. 1,600 Newton meters to be exact. That's more torque than most cars have horsepower. It's a lot. It's wild. Like, imagine asking a tightrope walker to juggle chainsaws while balancing on a wire between skyscrapers. That's a scary thought. It's like, you're just asking for trouble. <laughs> yeah. Now, to Bugatti's credit, they haven't ignored this whole thing. Okay. They've admitted that some owners had these issues. Right. But they're saying they're like one-off things. So they're saying it's not a widespread problem. Exactly. And they're saying that the Chiron is still super reliable. Okay. Especially considering how powerful it is. Yeah. Which, you know, makes sense. They've built their name on being the best. They have. But let's be real. When you're spending millions of dollars on a car. Millions. Any problem, no matter how small, is a big deal. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're talking about a car that's supposed to be the gold standard. Right. You expect it to be flawless. Exactly. It's like if you buy, you know, a, a fancy watch and it can't even tell time. Right. You'd be kind of upset. Yeah. So how do these clutch problems happen in a car that's supposed to be perfect. Well, you gotta remember the Chiron is a super complex car. Oh yeah. All these cutting edge parts have to work perfectly together. Right, to give that smooth driving experience. That's exactly. Okay, so break that down a little. Okay. The Chiron has a, what is it, a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Yeah. Now for people who aren't, you know, car experts, what's that all about? Basically it means the gears change really, really fast. Okay. It's what lets you go from zero to 60 
in like two seconds. So that's how they get that smooth acceleration. Exactly. But here's the thing. To handle all that power, yeah. the transmission has to like wrangle all this force with every gear change. Wow. Imagine stopping a train with your bare hands. That's a scary thought. That's kind of what we're talking about. So even though Bugatti is known for, you know, their attention to detail. Right things can still break with that kind of pressure. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a testament to how good they are that this isn't happening more often. That's true. And to be fair to them, Bugatti's not ignoring it. Right. They're working on fixing it, you know, tweaking the design. So they're listening to the owners who are having problems. They are, which I'm sure is a relief if you just spent millions on one of these cars. For sure, but get this. Did you know that Bugatti actually loses money really? on every single Chiron they sell? I had no idea. Yeah, Volkswagen, who owns Bugatti. Right. They don't see the Chiron as like a moneymaker. Interesting. It's more about showing off what they can do. A showcase. Yeah, it's like they're saying, look, we can build a car so powerful, so advanced, that it doesn't even make sense, but we did it. Wow. And you can really see that in every part of the car? Oh, yeah. The engine, the interior, everything is like top-of-the-line craftsmanship. It's like the Mona Lisa of cars. Basically. But, and this is a big but, even with all that, yeah. those custom parts, things can still go wrong. That's the thing about pushing the limits, isn't it? Right. You're in uncharted territory. Totally. So you're going to run into some surprises. Yeah. And this clutch problem, yeah. maybe that's just one of those bumps in the road. Interesting. It's like you're trying to defy the laws of physics, and sometimes they fight back. Right. And with the Chiron, those laws of physics are dealing with forces that, like, Regular cars never even come close to. We've talked about how powerful it is, a torque, those crazy speeds. Good luck. But here's something that really blew my mind. The tires on this thing. Yeah. They're not just like off the shelf, you know. What do you mean? They're custom made by Michelin. Oh, wow. They're specifically designed for this car and how crazy it is. We're talking like molecular level engineering here. That's insane. They have to be built to handle that much force. A normal tire would explode. I, right. It's wild. Yeah. But even with all that, all that effort, those custom made parts, mm -hmm. things can still go wrong. And that's what's so interesting about pushing the limits like that. Yeah. You're going into the unknown, right? Right. So you're going to find those weak points eventually. Yeah. So... I guess the big question is, should we be bummed that even a car like this, the Chiron, mm -hmm. has problems? Or should we be impressed that it even works as well as it does? Right. It makes you think. Because it really is pushing the limits. It really is. I think that's the question we want to leave people with, you know. Is the Bugatti Chiron a perfect car with some flaws? Right. Or is it more about how ambitious it is, even if it has some hiccups along the way? And this is something that goes way beyond just cars, right? Oh, absolutely. It, it makes you think about any kind of innovation. Right. Because if you don't try new things and push the boundaries, mm -hmm. are you really innovating at all? Exactly. And sometimes those bumps in the road, those problems you run into, yeah. they lead to even bigger discoveries later on. You learn from your mistakes. Right. So maybe the thing to remember about these Chiron clutch issues isn't just about the car itself. Okay. It's about what it represents, this idea of always trying to do better, mm -hmm. knowing that perfection is like always changing. Right. And remembering that even the coolest, most advanced machines yeah. are still just machines. That's a good point. Something to think about, right? Definitely. So well, next time you see a Bugatti Chiron out there, yeah. don't just see a car. Okay. See all the work that went into it, you know? Mm -hmm. A reminder that even when we're obsessed with being perfect, right. there's always more to learn, more to find out, more to explore. So until next time, keep asking questions. Keep pushing yeah. those boundaries. Yeah. Keep diving deep.